Okay, so this is just a quick review video um, to get you guys started on the work for today. So let's say that I have a, a string, a string um, stored here um, in the form of a song. Um, so I have song equals I can't get no satisfaction, which is just a song by the Rolling Stones. Um, let's say that I want to just get one letter in the string. This is similar to like the index values inside of a list. But if you use an index value inside of a list, it's going to get one item in the list, which is often itself a word. If you use an index value in a string, it's just going to get you only one piece of that um, phrase, which would either be a letter or white space. So the way that I could uh, do this is I could either just say directly, I could print song. And of course, if I do that, it's just going to say the entire song. But if I add an index value like zero, it's going to give me one. If I add... Um, if I add another index value, let's say that I add, uh, sorry, one, it's going to run and actually, it, it looks like it didn't give me anything, but it actually gave me the white space right here. Okay. Um, so let's say that I want to, oh, the other thing I could do is I could store it in a string. So I could say uh, song underscore two is equal to just one part of this song. So let's say the fifth index of this song. And then I could say that I want to print that. So I could store it just one, I could access one part of that song and give it to a variable, and then I could say print the variable. Okay, and that gets me the apostrophe here. Okay, okay so let's say that I want to get a piece of the string, um, not just one individual item in the string, but like a, a, a range of values inside of the string. What I can, this is actually called a substring. Okay, um, so it said, the question is how can I get the substring no satisfaction. So I just want to get that substring. So in order to do that, let's say let's say I'm going to store it in a variable called substring. Substring one is equal to, okay, um, and no satisfaction is right here. So I want to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's try it. So substring equals. Remember, I say the name of the string first, and then I want to go from twelve to the end of the line. So let's say that I don't want to even take the time to like figure out, well, that's, let's see, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's 26. Let's see if I can do that. And do I get, oh, I didn't ask it to print. Let me put this in a comment. So if I say print substring like that, let's see if it gives me it. Okay, I'm missing the end. That's right, because I, I can't just go to the 26th one. I have to go to the 27th one because the 20. if I go to 27, it will go up to 26. So remember, it includes the first value, but it goes right bef it cuts right before the second value. So that way I can get the entire thing. Now, if I, did, if I didn't want to just take that time and count it out, I could actually put a colon there. So a colon says that you want a range of values or a substring. If you just have a single value, it's going to give you one thing in return. Whereas if you put a range like this, so a range and index is separate by a colon, not a comma, like we've been seeing before in some other syntax. Um, but let's say I didn't want to count all the way to 27. A quick way, a quick shortcut is actually just to put the colon there and um, put nothing in the second value. And that will tell the computer that you actually want to start at 12 and go to the very end. Okay. Um, and if I had added like an exclamation point there and I ran it again, it would actually get the exclamation point as well. Okay. Let me comment those out. I highlight them and hit command question mark. That way they won't run. Um, what do negative index values do? So let's say that I have, let's call this negative for a second. Negative is equal to, and I'm going to say song and let's go with negative one. And let's see, let's actually have it print negative. If I do that, it gets me the end. That's because what it's doing is it's starting from the back of the string and working its way forward. So let's say I say a negative two, like that, or negative four. Um, so it gets me the T. So it actually starts, it doesn't start counting at zero like it does in the front. It starts at counting at negative one. So negative one, two, three, four here. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is how to skip. Um, skip numbers when you're using a substring. So let's say that I have, let's call this skip equals um, song, and I can put in three values in the range. So if I say I want to start at two, and I want to go to eight, but I want to skip every third one. I want to go start at two, and then go three, four, five, right? So let's see what this does. 
Okay, so the problem with this, oh, oh, I didn't ask it to print. Sorry about the noise outside, a lot of traffic this morning. So it gets me the C, so 0, 1, 2, so it gets me the C, and then it goes skip 1, 2, 3, and look, it looks like it prints the third one. And then since I only went to 8, that's the last one in the range. If I asked it to do, if I put nothing in there, it would actually go from 2 to the very end, and it would print every third one right there. Okay, those are some things that you'll need to know for today's practice.